this lecture, I'd like to talk about heat transfer at the nanoscale. So in our previous lecture, we introduced heat transfer and talked about it in the bulk, and we specifically discussed conductivity. And in this lecture, I'd like to talk to you about how things change at the nanoscale. Okay? So to remind you, we discussed uh, the material parameter that governs the rate of heat transfer via heat transfer via conduction. And so that formula is that the power or rate of heat transfer is Ka times dt dx, where K is the thermal conductivity, A is the cross-sectional area, and dt dx is the uh, temperature gradient, okay? So here are some values of thermal conductivity. And you can see that depending upon the material, the thermal conductivity can be quite different. And it's even more different if you have an insulating material. So where does this thermal conductivity come from? Well, last time we said that the thermal conductivity for a particular type of carrier, like electron, phonon, so on and so forth, right? That is equal to rho CV lambda over 3, right? So discussing this, this rho CV lambda over 3, rho is the density of the carrier, C is the heat, uh, specific heat of the carrier, V is the velocity on average of the carrier, and lambda is the mean free path of the carrier, which is how far the carrier will move before it undergoes a collision on average. So, in other words, if a carrier is scattered more, then that means that the mean free path lambda is shorter, and then that leads to a smaller rate of thermal conduction, okay? Now, we discussed in a previous lecture on Fermi statistics what the mean free path for a conduction electron is, and that is taking the Fermi velocity, V sub f, and set it equal to lambda over t, or lambda over tau, where tau is the mean free time, or time in, in between collisions. And you can get tau directly from the conductivity, right? So the conductivity of the material sigma is n q squared tau over the mass of the carrier, right? So n is the carrier density, q is the charge of the carrier, tau is the mean free time, and n is the mass of the carrier. So this is all for the bulk. But sometimes, at the nanoscale, the mean free path that you would measure in the bulk is actually larger than the dimension of the object. Well, why would that be? Scattering can occur off of boundaries, like the surface of a nanoparticle, or grain boundaries, things like that. So in nanoscale devices, sometimes your mean free path can be even shorter than it would be in the bulk because the dimensions of the particle or the film or whatever are actually smaller than the bulk mean free path. That causes, according to this equation, rho CV lambda over 3, if lambda is smaller, then your um, thermal conductivity will also be smaller. So it's a suppression of the thermal conductivity compared to the bulk values. Now this could be either bad or good, depending upon your application. It could be bad if you want to keep your nanoscale stuff cool. In other words, if you want to keep something cool, it's better to keep K high so that the rate of heat transfer is fast away from the object. But if you want an insulating material, maybe nanoscale particles are the way to go, right? Because then K is low and heat transfer out um, is uh, much suppressed. So we've already discussed the smallest possible unit of electrical resistance and conductance. We called it the resistance quantum or the conductance quantum depending on which one we're talking about. And they're inverses of one another, right? Resistivity is one over the conductivity. We discussed this in the uh, context of single electron transistors and things like that. Now, recent experiments also suggest that this concept applies to heat transfer. To quote, once the structure gets small enough, only this certain amount of heat will ever be able to flow through it at a time and no more. So we're going to derive what is called this quantum of thermal conductance. And to do so, we're going to start with the Wiedemann Franz law. Now in 1853, this, this law dates from 1853, which may seem a little funny for a nanoscience class, but here we go. Gustav Wiedemann and Rudolf Franz found that the ratio of the thermal conductivity to the electrical conductivity of conduction electrons in metal always had the same value, regardless of the metal type. That's kind of cool, right? So if you take the ratio of the uh, thermal conductivity divided by sigma, 
right, the um, electrical conductivity, then it was equal to L times T. Now here, L is the Lorenz number, which is a proportionality constant, and T is the temperature. Now the Lorenz number L is 2.44 times 10 to the minus 8 watts ohms per Kelvin squared. And it just so happens that this number is also equal to this combination of fundamental constants. Pi squared over 3 times Boltzmann's constant over the electrical uh, charge, 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulomb, Kb over E squared. And that gives you 2.44 times 10 to the minus 8 in SI units. Okay, So this was their important discovery from 1853. But now, applying this to some of our ideas from uh, advanced physics and nanoscale physics from today, we can plug in to our relationships for the conductance quantum, right, the electrical conductance, and the uh, L and T, and then find the thermal conductance quantum. So to find the quantum of thermal conductance, which we'll call G naught, we can apply the wiedemann franz law, right? So remember that we said that the sigma, the quantum conductance for electricity, right, was E squared over H. We talked about that in a previous lecture. So if I solve for the thermal conductivity, according to the wiedemann franz law, the conductivity K would be equal to LT times sigma. So L was pi squared over 3 times K over E squared times the temperature, and now times this quantum of electrical conductance, right, which is E squared over H. So if we solve that equation, then we end up with pi squared times Boltzmann's constant squared times the temperature divided by 3 times Planck's constant H. Okay, so this is just a simple plug and chug into the wiedemann franz law, and we end up with the quantum of thermal conductance G naught. Okay. So this has actually been experimentally measured, right? So this has been proven experimentally so far. So here's one experiment that uh, worked on that, and it's shown here, a figure from that uh, paper is shown here. And the uh, work was entitled Measurement of the Quantum of Thermal Conductance, and it was published in Nature in 2000, okay? So they created a phonon cavity, which is a quasi-isolated thermal reservoir that was suspended by four phonon waveguides. Okay. And this was fabricated from a 60 nanometer thick silicon nitride membrane with electron beam lithography. So this is an image from their paper here at top. And it starts off large, relatively large, and then it zooms in onto this device that they fabricated, this phonon cavity. Okay. So here we are starting off large. And then in view B here in the middle view, it's a view of the device. And this was a 4 micrometer by 4 micrometer phonon cavity in here, right, um, patterned from the membrane. Um, and then uh, here it says the bright C-shaped objects on the device are the thin film gold transducers. And in the dark regions, the membrane has been removed, okay. And the transducers are connected to a thin film niobium lead that runs atop the phonon waveguides. And these leads ultimately terminate at the wire bond pads. And then this in C on the right is a close-up of one of the waveguides, displaying the narrowest region which necks down to less than a 200 nanometer width. So in other words, they're forcing the phonons to travel across this very narrow little path here, and that only allows a certain amount of thermal energy to be conducted per unit time. So this is a plot from their um, work here. So they first raised the temperature of the phonon cavity by heating its integrated gold resistor, and then they employed the second transducer to measure the induced change in the temperature. And the ratio of the heat current flowing through the waveguides to the induced rise in the cavity temperature is the phonon thermal conductance of the waveguides, and that's plotted here, okay? And you can see that it starts off behaving like a bulk, and then it plateaus off when it reaches that quantum level. So in so doing, they measured the quantum of thermal conductance. Pretty cool, right? So this has been, this quantum of thermal conductance has been shown exper uh, theoretically and experimentally to be true. Um, and so you can limit the amount of uh, thermal energy that's transferred, just like you have the quantum of electrical conductance, you have the quantum of thermal conductance. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you in class.